بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. We praise Allah subhanahu wa taala on a beautiful day like this, the second eve of, or the second night of Taraweeh, the second eve of the fast. May Allah subhanahu wa taala accept it from us in this beautiful masjid, Masjid al Furdaus, in Polokwane, in the northern part of South Africa, a day before the elections. May Allah subhanahu wa taala grant us ease. My brothers and sisters. The verses that were read this evening have several themes and topics of discussion where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guiding you and I. It is only through the guidance of Allah that you will achieve happiness, contentment and success in this world and the next. If you think you know better than Allah, there is no chance that you are going to succeed. Allah made us, when He made us, we knew nothing. When He made us, we were unable to even move much without the help of our parents or whoever else was taking care of us. As we grew older, there came an age where we became able to do things. When we became able to think well, when we became able to move properly on our own, we became known as responsible. That age of responsibility, the age of maturity, Allah expects from you and I to now find Him and worship Him alone. You have to ask yourselves as humankind a question always, where did I come from and where am I going to go? If you have the proper answers of those questions, you will know what you need to do here. You will know what you need to do here. Your friends have passed away. There are others who were born after you, who grew more powerful than you, who amassed more wealth and became physically stronger than you. Allah knows. He has spoken about all of this. Allah made you either a male or a female and Allah chose that for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a deep understanding. I promise you this is the month of the Quran. I thank Allah and we should all thank Allah that he has set aside one month dedicated to the Quran. Do you dedicate it to the Quran? Allah has set aside one month of the Islamic calendar for the Quran. It is known as Shahrul Quran. It is a month of reflection. It is a month of introspection. It is a month of correction. It is a month of all sorts of goodness. It is a month where we will be filled with compassion, with generosity. That is the month. Why? Because we will be studying the Quran. That's what happened to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The hadith says he was very generous. His character always was shining, but more so in the month of Ramadan. When Jibreel alayhi salam used to come to him and they used to go through the Quran, it had a beautiful effect. The Huffad we have, mashallah, they are doing a good job. Appreciate it and take your time. When it comes to the masjid, there is something strange that happens. In Ramadan, shaitan has left. How many of you are on WhatsApp groups where now there is a new little WhatsApp sign saying Shaitan left? You might have seen that in the last day or two. It's happening, it's trending globally, right? One wonders, was Shaitan even in the group? The answer was yes. He was quietly there causing all the fitna, right? But the difficulty is now that he's left, there's a Shaitan inside of us that operates. All the window wars that happen in nearly every masjid in the world, all the light wars and the sound wars and these other wars that have nothing to do with ibadah, but it's got to do with your own comfort. All those wars are you, you as a shaitan, not a separate shaitan from outside. Those are tied up, but it's a shaitan inside. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوًّا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِّ يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ The point I'm raising, Allah says here, that is how all the prophets of Allah have had enemies from the shayateen of two kinds. Shaytan of mankind who is poisonous and shaytan of jinn kind who is also bad. So two types of shayateen. The point I raise is 
the month comes in, don't lose focus. It is a month where you are going to be tested. You know, I was in a cold country where they had the windows open. And I was feeling a little bit cold in Taraweeh. And so I told one brother, is there a reason why these windows are open? I don't like to play games with windows. You can have it open, you can have it closed. It's only a matter of one hour. Imagine you in your grave, who's going to open the window when you made a noise in the masjid? The house of Allah, you made such a disrespectful noise, caused a war that resulted in people not coming to the masjid. The imam said moments ago that when the children are making a noise, yes, we want to help them, but do it in a way that doesn't chase them out of the masjid forever. So I asked this man, I said, you know, what is happening? He said, look, have you ever thought that when it is hot, you can do nothing about it? But when it is cold, you can bring your jacket and your jersey. Subhanallah. I never thought of that. So if you are feeling cold, it's better to be colder in the masjid where you have some warm clothes that you have brought along than for it to be hot because of you and those who are not used to that heat are all sweating simply because you are feeling cold. May Allah grant us ease. I hope you are listening to the logic here. It is a very, very logical matter from that day i always try and tell people open the windows whoever's feeling cold bring your jacket bring your jersey bring your big big hats mashallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease but i don't mean to interfere in your masjid but i'm almost certain you will have before the end of ramadan a few misunderstandings regarding the sound regarding the lights regarding the windows regarding the parking that's all normal it's your test for ramadan it happens every ramadan in nearly every masjid in the world how's that May Allah forgive us. So now Allah has created us. He made us. He knows what He wants from us. And like I said, you need to know where you are and what Allah wants from you. And so Allah sent us a book. And that book, Allah has set aside a whole month for you to study it. Do you really study it? How many of us are softened in the month of generosity? How many of us are generous? This evening, one of the main themes was about spending. Spending on poor people, spending in the cause of Allah, a good cause, spending in the house of Allah, this masjid and all the other masajid on earth and the Islamic institutions require money in order to pay bills for the lights that you used, in order to pay for the salaries of the people who swept the carpet where you read salah, in order to pay for the water bills that you used, in order to pay for the parking and the guards that you were protected by, by the help of Allah. But we never pay any money. Why? There's a few people here who give a lot of money. So why should the rest give? I promise you, if I were to tell you that every salah of yours is worth 500 rands, I would be lying because it's far more than that. But if you were to pay five rands for every time you use the facility of the masjid, at least you know someone else didn't pay for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Many of us use the masjid. Someone else has paid for you to use the masjid. Can't you pay? Five rands per salah. Work out how many salah you in the masjid. And please don't stop coming to the masjid to say, I'll have to pay five rands. <laughs> but at the same time, learn to give, learn to be generous. You use the facility. We use the lights. We use everything. We, are, we benefit from it. Where's your money going? Let it go a little bit to the masjid. Subhanallah. وَأَنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَةِ Spend in the cause of Allah. The cause of Allah, سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ It is any cause that will please Allah is called سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Any cause where the pleasure of Allah lies is called سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ It's the path of Allah. You happen to spend on an orphan, on a widow, on your neighbor, someone in need, a person in the masjid, on the masjid, this, that, to build the masjid, on the madrasa, to here, to there, to sadaqa, khairat, whatever it may be. A good cause with a good heart is always sabilillah. It is the path of Allah. That was a verse we heard tonight. Spend in the path of Allah. And then Allah says, and do not use your hands to destroy yourselves, to harm yourself. Don't ever cause harm on your own selves in any way. Be it through a bad habit, be it through any other way where you're causing harm for your own self. Allah says, don't do that. Your body is an amana from Allah. Now I want to pause for a moment and tell you, this Quran is beautiful. Every time Allah speaks about number one, Develop your relationship with Allah. Number two, develop your relationship with the rest of the creatures that Allah made. Subhanallah. And prepare for the akhirah. 
learn to treat people with respect. The two main things are called huququllahi wa huququl ibadi, the rights of Allah. When Allah says, wa aqimu salata wa atu zakah, we heard that verse tonight also, we heard it last night also, and we will hear it many other nights. What is the connection between the two? One is specially only for Allah. The other one, as much as it is for the sake of Allah, it is going to benefit the creatures that Allah created. You see, one is you worshipped Allah. Two is now that your heart is soft, go out and look for poor people, look for a good cause, spend from what Allah gave you. Moments ago, I told you, I'm up to the point where you don't have ability, you are not responsible. You become responsible at the age of maturity. At the age of puberty, you are responsible. At that age, you have the ability now, the physical capacity, so you must worship Allah. The day you get the financial capacity, you must worship Allah through helping other people and other good causes. Your money is needed, but if you don't give it, another person's money will be used in a good cause, and you know what will happen. Subhanallah, your money will be used on something that is wasteful. May Allah not let that happen. So spend. So much of time tonight was spent on verses regarding giving. If you are going to make your charities known, it's okay, no problem. If there is a good intention, you want to encourage others, there's no harm in announcing how much you spent. Remember, there's a fine line between pride, arrogance, showing off on one hand, and on the other hand, trying to encourage people. Hey, look, you know what? I gave 10 grand. Why don't you give 10 also? The man says, you gave 10. I'm going to give 20. That's what happened at the time of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They were competing with each other for giving. So I'm not going to announce it. Guys, I gave 10. So I have a special parking in the front there, and I got a booked seat in the first sof. This is not football, my brothers and sisters. We are all VIPs here. The only people you're allowed to book seats for right behind the Imam are the other Imams and those of knowledge. They have a seat right behind. Because why? The Hadith says those behind me in Imama, when the Imam is in the front, those behind should be those who have knowledge, those who have sound understanding, the Huffad and the Ulama. They should be behind. So it's not wrong to book out about five, six seats here right behind the imam to say this is for other imams and other huffad and other ulama not bad many masjids don't even do that but if they do they have the right to it's okay because if something goes wrong they can correct they can take over if the if the nosebleed happens for example imam passes wind by mistake these are rulings that are there in jurisprudence no need to you know to laugh about it because there is a way of taking over from where he left off you who wants to be a wise crack who knows nothing standing behind when that happens you're probably going to start laughing subhanallah but there's another knowledgeable person he will get up and carry on from where that imam left off in a way that he knows hence the place but Going back, you even reserve parkings. Reserve parkings in the masjid. Unless it is for someone who is disabled. Or someone who is the imam of the masjid. Or someone who is a guest. It shouldn't be that anyone because of his money, because of his whatever else, that they have a reserve parking specially for him. Or a reserve seat in the masjid specially for him. No, you will lose if you do that. May Allah grant us ease. So Allah says, if you give your charities and people know about it, no harm. But if you hide it, If you hide it and quietly give it away to the poor, it is better for you and Allah will forgive your sins. Subhanallah. Quietly. No one knows what you did in your life. When you go to the Akhirah, you know Allah knows. I always say, people when they commit sin, they like to commit sin in private. They don't want anyone to watch them. Before they commit a sin, they make sure no one's watching. If only they knew Allah is watching. Subhanallah. But when we do good deeds, we want everyone to watch. Look at the opposite poles. However, try and have some good deeds that no one knows. It's hidden between you and Allah. Have some of those. So on the day of Qiyamah, it will help you. So my brothers and sisters... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to spend in His cause. When He has given us, we spend with humbleness. We spend with generosity. Remember, when we say what came first, the egg or the chicken, and people start talking, right? For your information, it was the chicken. 
But if you argue about what came first, the egg or the chicken, people will go around in circles. I want to ask you another question. Who is more important, the rich man or the poor man? Tell me. If it was not for the poor, the sadaqat of the rich were not going to be accepted. You won't be able to fulfill a pillar of Islam because there's no poor people. So be happy that Allah has given you poor people coming to you to ask you, please give me. I'm not condoning begging, but I'm only showing you that at times Allah brings in front of your nose someone to help you to fulfill a pillar of Islam. But the way you treat them like disrespectful. That's why Allah says, As for the beggar, the one who's asking, don't rebuke him, don't insult him. You don't want to give him, no problem. If there is a reason why you don't want to give, no problem. But don't insult. Watch your mouth. That just could be a person Allah sent to you to watch what you do. Not about him, it's about you. You don't give him, the next man will give him more maybe. Who knows? You know those beggars begging, it's not like they go back without food. They go without food, they go with the food. But who gave them is what is of essence. Think about what I'm saying. When the masjid project is happening, it will be built. You didn't give money, you didn't give. But others gave, the masjid was built. It didn't stop because of your lack of donation. Remember what I'm saying. Perhaps sometimes I always believe when money is dirty and it's earned in the wrong way, that person will never ever want to spend on a good cause. They will go to the gigs and the pubs and wherever else and they'll go to spend their money on entertainment. But when it comes to the masjid or to the ulama, they will be the lowest paid and the masjid will be hardly we ever give. And if we do, we scrounge it so badly and we make a big issue out of the few cents that we gave. Keep your money. It's Allah's house. He will take care of it. You're giving, give with honor. Otherwise, don't give. Your money can stay where it is. Use it wherever you want. If your heart is clean, you give for the sake of Allah. It's the house of Allah. I always want to cry when I think of the story of Abu Talib and those at the time when Abraha was coming to destroy the Kaaba. And he had, this man had thousands of camels that were taken away by Abraha. And what happened is, Amazing, it's very, very amazing. The, the, they were coming with this elephant to destroy the Kaaba. And Abu Talib goes and says, you know, I want my camels back. So they said, you are so foolish, you want your camels back, but we are not coming here for the camels. Actually, the camels are, by the way, we're going to destroy the Kaaba. Why don't you talk about the Kaaba? He said, listen, listen, listen. The Kaaba has a Lord who will protect it. Bring back my camels for now. Subhanallah. What happened? That Kaaba definitely had a Lord who protected it. That's why I'm saying this. This masjid has a Lord who will take money from those who have good, goodness in their heart. May Allah soften our hearts. The politics that happens in every single masjid across the globe is only to distinguish between people regarding the house of Allah who is going to still have a big heart and say, Oh Allah, your cause, I got a few issues, but Bismillah, I'm going to give because it's your house. That's what Allah wants to watch. But we fail the test. And I'm saying, I don't know about this community. When I was here, it was one of the best communities I had visited. I hope it is still the same. Judging from the sound, it is even better. <laughs> May Allah grant us ease. My brothers and sisters, I promise you, soften your heart. Watch out the tests that come in your direction. Sometimes you think you're fixing someone, not realizing Allah is just fixing you. So one of the themes I spoke about now was the theme of giving. Please give, give, donate, give generously. The best of money you can give is that which you give in the path of Allah quietly. And you are fearing, I don't even have so much money, but I'm still going to give because you give, Allah will give you. I said it last night, I'm saying it again today. You want? Well, give, then Allah will give you. Allahu Akbar. Anfiq ya ibn Adama yunfaq alayk. Spend, O son of Adam, and it shall be spent on you. Subhanallah. Amazing. Let's move on to the second topic. I have a self-imposed time restriction of 20 minutes, but maybe I might just overshoot because Brother Asghar told me I could go on until Fajr. He said people will have their sehri. Uh, yeah, if you're going to throw eggs, you better throw them at him, not at me. Mashallah. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll, we'll, we'll round up just now, inshallah. But tomorrow, I think, is a holiday, right? Is it a holiday? Subhanallah. So then we'll round up in a little bit of bonus time. The second topic is the issue of when you don't get along with your wife. How's that? Allahu Akbar. Do you know Allah addresses it here? Surah Al-Baqarah. The surah of the cow. Allahu Akbar. 
وإذا طلقتم النساء فبلغن أجلهن فأمسكوهن بمعروف أو سرحوهن بمعروف ولا تمسكوهن ضرارا لتعتدوا ومن يفعل ذلك فقد ظلم نفسه ولا تتخذوا آيات الله هزوا. You would cry if you knew the meaning. Let me tell you what it says. It says when you divorce your wives, don't hold, meaning don't leave them hanging. If you divorce a woman and she is in her idda, you can either take her back if that talaq is revocable, you can take her back or you can leave her. You do one of the two. So when, when you don't get along with a woman and the relationship is toxic, Allah is warning you, don't ever punish her. To say, I'm going to fix you, I'm going to show you, I'm not going to give you the talaq because of X, Y and Z. Watch out, Allah says, we will fix you. You think you're going to fix a woman? We will fix you. It's just a matter of time. Listen to the rest of the verse. Allah says, don't hold them back in order to harm them. لا تمسكوهن ضرارا لتعتدوا Don't ever hold a woman back in your marriage when it's toxic and she wants to go and you're not getting along and the marriage is over. But you just don't want to give it because you think talaq is in your hand. Allah says, watch out. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَقَدْ ظَلَمَ نَفْسَهُ Whoever has done that, don't blame Allah. They have wronged themselves. You just wait and watch what Allah does. Did you hear what we said? But we don't talk about this. Surah Baqarah comes and we just think of the cow. That's it. Subhanallah. Some people even call their wives cows. Astaghfirullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. This type of derogatory statements that come out of our mouths, Allah has an account of it. Wallahi. When you use bad words to refer to someone, there is a record of it with Allah. Allah will give you that. It was your day. Their day will come. Remember this. There is no chance that the one who is most just can allow injustice to carry on. He'll give you a small chance after that. He's going to catch you. So make amends. That's why we have Ramadan. Soften up. Ask people for forgiveness. Put your tail between your legs. Put your pride where it's supposed to be. And go and say, look, I'm sorry I've wronged you. Allah will give you Jannah. Allah will give you Jannah. It's too hard to go and apologize. How can I apologize to that man? He worked for me, man. He was a this, he was a that. How? Go and apologize. That is when you understand who Allah is. Subhanallah. Allah, Allah catch you. You wonder, why am I sick? Yeah, people will tell you, don't worry, test from Allah, test from I tell you from now. First thing, when you have a problem, difficulty and hardship, ask yourself, who have I harassed and troubled? Maybe I troubled one of the friends of Allah. Now I'm getting lashed. It's possible. The ulama at the time won't tell you that. When you're in a problem, they'll always give you good news. Don't worry, it's a test. Make dua, make dhikr, make this, make that. No, I'm telling you now when we don't have that problem, when it still hasn't come, watch out, make amends. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah says, Allah will not punish people while they are making tawbah. If you're making tawbah and you're seeking forgiveness from Allah, He says, at that juncture, I won't punish you. So please make a lot of istighfar. This is the month of tawbah, the month of forgiveness. Allah tells you, if you hold back the women, and if you oppress women in marriage, and you harming them, and you know that they left their houses of their fathers and their siblings and so on, and they came to you and you don't offer them the respect that they are supposed to be offered, we will sort you out. That's what Allah says. Can't. And I want to quickly take you to the 28th Jews, the first verse. Where it happened literally. قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ Allah has heard the woman who came to you telling you about her husband and his ill treatment of her and she is complaining to Allah. We've heard what she just said. We will give her the solution, Allah says. So that's proof to show that verse in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah says, watch out, we'll fix you. Here in Surah Al-Mujadila, Allah is telling you, well, we did find the solution for her and we did sort the man out. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us ease. I know tonight some men will be sending me emails saying, 
Sheikh, it's vice versa. Actually, she's holding me. May Allah forgive us. I hope that's not the case. I hope that's not the case. My brothers and sisters, the world is turning around. MashaAllah. May Allah grant us returning to Him in a way that He is pleased with us. Say Ameen. So my brothers and sisters, that is Allah. There are more verses regarding talaq and the treatment of women in tonight's verses, but I'm not going to go through them. I want to now move to a third theme. There are several du'as that were mentioned by Allah here in Surah Al Imran, which we started off tonight. The one of them that stands out. Before I say the du'a, let me introduce the topic. This is the month of Ramadan. It's the month of forgiveness. We are all in salah. We all stood for salah. We made ibadah. We're reading Quran. We're doing good deeds. We've become better people. The sins we left outside and so on and so forth. Allah says, call out to Allah not to let you go back to the bad that you were in. Once Allah has guided you. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِلْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُنْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْوَهَّابَ O oh my Rabb, O oh our Rabb, do not lead astray our hearts after you have guided them and grant us Mercy from you, give us rahma. We are in desperate need of your mercy. Don't allow our hearts to go back to misguidance. The sins, let our hearts look at them and consider them bad. Make it difficult for us to sin. Make it easy for us to obey. And Allah will open your doors. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, He is the giver. He will give you that. Ask Him for it. Make that dua often. Oh Allah, don't let our hearts go back to misguidance after we were guided. After you guided us. And then the last verse that I want to talk about here is where Allah talks about the people amassing wealth. People amass so many things. Allah says there are so many things beautiful. Women are beautified. Wealth is beautified. You know, mountains of gold and silver, all beautified for man. And Allah says, you know what? You better be careful because do everything the right way. Don't commit adultery to get to a woman. Make nikah and make nikah easy. Whoever makes halal easy has made haram difficult. And whoever makes halal difficult has made haram easy. So you will pay the price. The parents who are seated here, we all have dreams for our children. We all want our children to marry a certain type of a person. A day will come when that might happen. Alhamdulillah. It may not happen. Ask yourself, would the Prophet ﷺ have allowed this? If the answer is yes, who am I not to allow it? Would Allah have allowed this? If the answer is yes, who am I not to allow it? As much as it's not my ideal, I'm going to let it happen so that I do not make haram easy and halal difficult. Difficult. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how shaitan has beautified these things. Just like money, we earn through our sweat. The hadith says the best money you can ever have earned is that which you earn by your own sweat. Because you know how many cents make a dollar. Hundred cents make a dollar. But if you didn't earn it with your own sweat for you, you can blow the money left, right and center. I remember a brother who had overweight excess baggage. And in there were only peanuts and some few other nuts that someone had given him. And he was too lazy to open the bag and take it out. And now he's at Heathrow Airport. What's he going to do? So he decided, you know what? In fact, he was in India, somewhere in India at the airport. And he decided, never mind, let me pay the overweight. They charged him an arm and a leg. So he paid so much of money for that overweight to go to England. When he got to the UK, his little grandchildren and children, they had all these peanuts all strewn, strewn around the garden and everywhere else. He called them all. He said, hey, hey, pick all these nuts up. You don't know how much each one has costed. Why? I paid for it. Overweight. Each one costs about two, three cents. Come on. You can't do this. So when you have paid for something, you know the value of it. When you didn't pay, what value you know? May Allah grant us value of goodness. Do it in a halal way. So Allah says, all the women and all the wealth and all the whatever happiness of the dunya, we want to show you something better than all of that. قُلْ أَأُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِخَيْرٍ مِّن ذَلِكُمْ 
should we show you something better than all of what we've just described now? لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْا عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتِ Those who developed a relationship with Allah, they will get Jannah. Allah says that relationship with Allah is better than everything you could have ever amassed in the dunya. Those who are wealthy from amongst us, make sure that you set your children properly. There's no point in letting them wait until the day you die for them to fight over your wealth. Do it while you're alive. Give your daughters, give your sons. When you're alive, you give them equal shares. Subhanallah. Remember, sort it out while you're alive. While you're alive, give them things so that they can pray for you. They can love your company. They will pray for your long life. They will look after you. What's the point of keeping it, keeping it, keeping it? They're praying, waiting. When is daddy going to die? When is daddy going to die? When is daddy going to die? There's three million stuck there. How? My brothers and sisters, may Allah grant us, what did you amass wealth for? Number one, your family members, your relatives, your children, your community, and the ummah and humanity. That's how we should be looking at it. So use and spend. May Allah grant us ease. Allah says, better than all of that is to develop your relationship with Allah. You will get Jannah. And you know what Allah says? They are the people. What are the qualities of those who develop this relationship with Allah known as taqwa? Taqwa is to have so much of love of Allah that you fear his anger. That is taqwa. I love someone so much that I don't want them to be upset with me, right? So you love Allah so much you don't want him to be upset with you. That's why you do good things. You know when we say I'm scared of Allah, you're scared of the punishment of Allah. You're scared of the anger of the one you love. It's a totally different type of fear. It's not fear as in I'm shaking. No, it's to say I love you so much I don't want to I don't want to upset you oh Allah in any way. Allahu Akbar. That is taqwa Allahi. So now Allah says الَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ First quality, those who believe in Allah, they say, رَبَّنَا, O oh our Rabb, آمَنَّا, we have believed in you, O oh Allah, so forgive us our sins. فَغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا and save us from the fire, from the hellfire, the punishment of hellfire, وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Then Allah says, الصابرين والصادقين والقانتين والمنفقين والمستغفرين بالأسحار. Five qualities you should never ever let go. What are they? Allah says, الصابرين, those who are patient, those who bear patience, they are forbearant. They are patient regarding the decree of Allah and regarding the instructions of Allah and regarding staying away from the prohibitions of Allah. They have sabr. As-sadiqeen, those who are truthful. As-sabirin wa as-sadiqeen. Wal-qanitin, those who are obedient unto Allah. They fulfill their salah in the best possible way. They enjoy acts of worship. You don't fulfill salah as a burden. You fulfill it as an honor. Allahu Akbar. You fulfill it as an honor. Look how man has become. If an important person who perhaps is of a political position somewhere happens to know us or we know him or he comes here, we would feel an honor if they called us or we had an opportunity to meet them, etc., etc. An honor to meet a human who himself needs the help of Allah so desperately. But to meet Allah, it's a burden. We can't wait to get out of the masjid. When you come in the house of Allah, if you love being in it, you're in the right track. But if you can't wait to get out, you still need a lot of help. You see, may Allah make us from those whose hearts are in the masjid. When you open the Quran and you can't wait to stop, you need help. But when you open the Quran and you can't wait to carry on and on, then you are heading in the right direction. Don't you see, we all need a lot of help, including myself. May Allah help us. الصابرين والصادقين والقانتين والمنفقين Those who spend. Look, it's come back. The topic came back. Why did Allah say, you want to develop a relationship with me? Spend. You know why? Let me explain in a nutshell. When you came on earth, you had nothing. No clothes, no zero, no nothing. Nothing at all. Whatever you have is above zero. So you are never at a loss. People say, hey, I'm underground. You're not. You have more than what you had the day you were born. When you were born, you had zero. Now you got clothes, now you got water, now you got what? It's more than what you had. So Allah is telling you, look, when you came, you had nothing. When you go, you will have nothing. 
while you are here, start giving. Start giving. We want to see it. We, we will give you to give. Let's see. Imagine you take your little son and you say, son, look, how much do you want? Son says, I need a hundred rands. You say, son, this is 200. Put hundred in the charity box there and the other hundred keep. He takes the 200. He looks at you, looks at you. When you're not looking, he runs away. What will happen? It's typical of little children, especially nowadays. Subhanallah. But that Allah tells us, I'm going to give you for every hundred, 97.5 is yours, two and a half, put it in the box. And we say, hey, it's hard to calculate that. You know, my, my, my money is actually tied up in a building. Sell the building. You will earn the pleasure of Allah. I promise you, no way. Don't compromise your Jannah. I know people say, I got little jewelry, now what should I do? Well, if you can't make a plan and your husband doesn't have to pay it, but if he wants to and he's helping you, good man, mashallah, at least allow him to have a little bit more barakah, inshallah. But at the same time, if it's not being paid because it's tied in jewelry, sadly or happily, you have to break that jewelry somehow, sell it and start paying that zakah. Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. It's a test from Allah. Allah says, we gave you. We just want to look. Half of that is yours. Not, not half. 97.5 you keep. Don't worry. 2.5 this side. He's saying, eh, I gonna. It's too big. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us. Wal munfiqeen. Allah, you want to develop a relationship with Allah? Show him. Show him you're going to give. Show him you're going to give. And the last quality, wal mustaghfirin bil ashar. Those who seek forgiveness in the early hours of the morning. Seek forgiveness. Everybody sleeping. Get up and cry to Allah. Get up and cry to Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, forgive my sins. I've done wrong. I've led a sinful life. Help me to change. Oh Allah, grant me goodness. Forgive my sins, my shortcomings. Allah says, those who can get up at night, early hours of the morning, asking us to forgive them, they have developed a relationship with us. Allah says, what we have given them in terms of Jannah is way better than everything those people who have the dunya have. So my brothers and sisters, these are the few verses that I chose to go through this beautiful city of Polokwani with absolutely lovely people. May Allah keep it this way and may Allah help you to be even more loving. For indeed, having spent a month of Ramadan here in 2012 with the theme the, the life of the noble Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it brings back the best of memories to be seated here in front of you this evening in this blessed month of Ramadan, beautiful house of Allah. And I can tell you, if anything, there is only more and more goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to cleanse our hearts and to work very hard so that our generations can be proud of the preparation that we made for them. أقول قولي هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك